A Secret Service agent was robbed at gunpoint during Biden's trip to California. And we begin tonight with that Secret Service agent robbed at gunpoint. U.S. Secret Service agent opened fire after being robbed at gunpoint. A U.S. Secret Service agent was robbed at gunpoint over the weekend. At 10, a U.S. Secret Service member was robbed at gunpoint in Orange County. Police in California are searching for the person who robbed a Secret Service agent at gunpoint. And now, you get this. Remember that star-studded event that took place in Los Angeles? There was a Secret Service agent who was actually robbed at gunpoint. So things are crazy in the state of California. Secret Service agents are being robbed at gunpoint. Let's talk about it. Okay, so this story starts with a mega donor fundraiser for President Biden. Check it out. President Biden's big ticket fundraiser is expected to bring in a whopping $28 million. Yeah, Susan, we were invited to join the pool tonight. The ground rule was we weren't able to shoot any video, but I could take notes and report back what I saw. Here's some of that. Jimmy Kimmel poses for a selfie with President Biden and former President Obama. On stage at the Peacock Theater, they lay out the case for Biden and against Trump. Biden saying, retribution, he's going to get back at the people. The evening raised more than $28 million, making it the largest single fundraiser in Democratic Party history. The cheapest ticket? 250 bucks, the most expensive, 500,000. In addition to celebrities like Barbara Streisand, Cheryl Lee Ralph, and Jason Bateman, there were also high profile Democrats from California in the crowd. Among them, Governor Gavin Newsom, LA Mayor Karen Bass, and many, many members of Congress. George Clooney and Julia Roberts serve as co hosts and warm up the crowd. Now, the Biden campaign raised about $30 million that day, which is remarkable. It's like the top amount ever raised by one Democrat at one event. And just for comparison, Trump is actually blown out of the water. He raised $50 million in a day. Here's what happened with Trump. Out to the race for the White House, former President Trump is far behind President Biden when it comes to fundraising. But Trump got a big boost this weekend. According to organizers, his campaign raked in a whopping $50 million at a Palm Beach fundraiser. Let's bring in ABC's Jay O'Brien from Washington. Jay, what more are you learning? Lindsay, tonight a campaign official telling ABC News that at that exclusive fundraiser, former President Trump telling that group of ultra wealthy donors that if he took office again, he would work to keep their taxes low by expanding his Trump era tax cuts. The campaign saying that it raked in a whopping $50 million from this event. It was the Republican response to that massive Democratic fundraiser last week with President Biden and former presidents Clinton and Obama that brought in an estimated $26 million, a record number for that party. Now, the Trump campaign is still trailing Democrats in their overall campaign cash, filing showing former President Trump using much of his campaign war chest to pay for his mounting legal bills. Now, another remarkable thing is that the Democrats brought out all the big names for this fundraiser and got about $30 million. Now, as I've been pointing out in my videos for the past couple of years, California has had a crime problem. Now, it's not all over the state, but in pockets where the progressive policies of light on crime and bail reform have gone into place, essentially making things like shoplifting legal. All right, another brazen theft at a San Francisco drugstore caught on video. It comes after the governor and local officials pledged to crack down on crime that has forced so many stores to close down. It's happened and again, four women run off after stealing from the CVS pharmacy at Van Ness and Jackson in San Francisco, this time just before six Monday night. It's the latest grab and go crime in San Francisco that's forced many drugstores in the city to close. The man who took this video tells me he feels sorry for the workers who have lost their jobs or have had their hours reduced because of what he called out of control shoplifting. Organized retail theft has become such a hot button issue that it's now a point of focus in the upcoming gubernatorial recall election. Now three, three of the top cities for organized retail theft in the United States are in California. LA's number one, San Francisco's number five, and Sacramento is number 10. Reporting live at SFPD headquarters, Henry Lee, KTVU, Fox Duty. Now, specifically where Biden was holding his fundraiser in Southern California, there was an alert that went out warning drivers that there was robbery schemes going on where people were getting carjacked and robbed in their cars. Here's the news report. 
Warning tonight for drivers in Orange County where armed robbers are using elaborate fraud schemes to rob and carjack unsuspecting motorists. Authorities say the robberies are brazen, well planned and dangerous. So now this brings us to what happened to the Secret Service agent. The Secret Service agent was robbed at gunpoint over the weekend while President Biden was in Los Angeles attending the star studded fundraiser. The incident occurred Saturday at about 9.30 local time. The agent was able to actually fire his weapon at the armed robbers who made off with a bag belonging to the agent. Gunfire in the affluent Tuscan Fields community off Edinger Ave. We now know it is an armed robbery and the target, a federal agent. The community here is really shocked. They're just really surprised because it's a very quiet neighborhood and nothing really happens here. You know, we get the occasional porch pirate. Only this is no porch pirate, and the victim is no helpless neighbor. It is a U.S. Secret Service agent, a Secret Service agent robbed at gunpoint. We found out that it was like a Secret Service um, agent. It was like a shooting or something of that nature. Crazy. Yeah, it's really, it was really strange, really crazy. And it gets even crazier. There is gunfire. The agent is the one who opens fire on the robber. These orange cones now turn to evidence markers placed on the ground by the spent shell casings. Count them one, two, three, six of them in all. Not sure if the robber is hit. He grabs the agent's bag and then drives off in his getaway car. Here it is from nearby security cameras. It is a 200406 Silver Infinity FX35. Now, obviously, this is not a good look for the Democratic Party to have one of their biggest fundraisers of all time and have a secret service agent who's protecting the president rob that gunpoint after the event. It's not looking good, especially with the pro-crime initiatives that the liberals in California are trying to push. But to be fair, the citizens of California are pushing back. Like you got recalls of the Oakland DA, the Oakland mayor, the San Francisco DA was recalled. So the people aren't stupid. They're getting behind this and saying, we got to kick out these extremists and get to some semblance of normalcy because you can't live like this. You can't live with people just being robbed willy nilly and essentially law enforcement not being able to do anything. You had the shoplifting issue. Now you have the robbery issue and What's the guy's name here on YouTube? He has a whole, like a whole series on his car being broken into in San Francisco. Here's a quick clip of that. These guys just broke into my car in San Francisco and stole my backpack. But what they'll soon find out is that thanks to some high-tech glitter and fart spray delivery mechanisms, that's no ordinary backpack. Ain't nobody back here, right? And this guy's also trying to break into my car, but what he doesn't realize is those are bulletproof windows. Cause that's just funny. Now, for those of you who don't know, I am a licensed attorney. Now, if you've been injured, reach out to me at natethelawyer.com. That's natethelawyer.com. Or if you feel more comfortable speaking with the representative, you can find me at 571-NATE-LAW. That's 571-NATE-LAW. Now, we handle a wide variety of cases from accidents to medical malpractice to workplace discrimination claims. Now, whichever way you contact us, the initial consultation is free, the advice is free, and we don't get paid unless we win your case. Now, the fact that you have Secret Service agents not safe when they're protecting the president in California is insane enough. But I always think the hypocrisy here when it comes to these light on crime policies really focuses in on the communities that these liberal politicians claim they want to protect. Now, the hypocrisy or the irony here is that these light on crime policies are hurting those black and brown communities the most. Now to Target, closing down a number of stores in major cities over the growing problem of retail theft. Rebecca Jarvis is back now with more on that. Good morning again, Rebecca. Nice to see you again, Michael and team. And this morning, Target has announced it will close nine stores in four states next month, blaming theft and organized retail crime that are threatening the safety of our team and guests. The retail giant says it has invested heavily in strategies to prevent and stop theft and organized retail crime in stores, including adding more security members using third party guard services. But despite those efforts, Target says it continues to face fundamental challenges to operating those stores safely and successfully. And Target's not alone. We've heard this from CVS as well as Dick's Sporting Goods recently closing stores. And according to the National Retail Federation, 28 percent of retailers reported being forced to close a specific store location last year and nearly half reduced those hours in the stores as a direct result of retail crime. And now retailers estimate the cost of this crime 
more than $112 billion. That's up from a year ago when it was $94 billion. The top five cities where this is impacting things in the past year, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, Houston, New York, and Seattle. So you heard that list, New York, Los Angeles, Houston, Seattle. Those are all Democrat run cities. As always, tell me where I'm wrong in the comment sections. Tell me, Nate, hey, you're wrong. This is just the way the world works. You can allow someone like this guy on, on the screen to get arrested 100 times for shoplifting and have absolutely no problems. He can go free as much as he wants. Again, I think it's simple. If you commit crimes, there should be some punishment. I know I'm a radical maniac, but I think the solution is simple. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe to all the great YouTube stuff. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.